Check it out, in this video I'm gonna be splitting up some streakers to try and make some rainbow and gradient effects. I've done split streakers in the past, but I've never mixed more than two colors. So we're gonna try it out. So I have the three Crink K80s from the last review. Also got some Sakuras, and I've got some old Mark All Bs that I might do some practicing on to see if we get the uh, kind of theory down before we do it with just the one or two colors that I really wanna use. I also have a pack of razor blades here to help cut everything down. Some people like to use fishing line and do it that way. I think the razor blades are gonna give us a little bit more tailoring towards exactly what we want to cut. So we got a little 10 pack here. So I'm going to do my first test with the Hobo Scrawler style. These are a little bit drier. But if we can get them going, they should work fine and give us a kind of idea if they actually kind of work and how I plan to actually split them. I would like to take a second to talk about Design Crowd, who has generously sponsored this video. Design Crowd helps anyone who's in need of a custom design find a designer for their next project. With over 600,000 designers worldwide, Design Crowd helps you to crowdsource your next custom logo, business card, website design, and much more. Design Crowd has provided a $100 VIP special for all SAI viewers. Entering the discount code SAI or following the link to designcrowd.com forward slash SAI will save you $100 on your next project. I'm in the middle of hosting a project to redesign my YouTube banner. I simply supplied the artwork and images that I want to use, along with a description of what I envisioned for the final piece. Not 12 hours later, I already had a few designers working on the project. After reviewing their submissions, I can reply with critiques and help them revise their designs. I'm definitely excited to see what the final outcome is for my project. And if you are in need of some custom-made designs, be sure to head over to designcrowd.com forward slash sive. So these are definitely a little drier than I thought. So I have seen it done where you can split into four or five different slices throughout the entire you know, color range. And then as you write, you can kind of spin the marker and get some of those different colors. So my goal here is actually go after a gradient effect so that at the top of the tag, we've got one color, might transition to another, and then all the way at the bottom, we've got a third color. So you get kind of that faded range. So in order to do that, I think I almost want to do slices so that you can start with the top of the marker, and then as you rotate up, you get maybe the middle section of a color, and then by the end of the tag, you rotate it down and get the bottom. That's my idea. Let's see how it works out. So if I want to start with maybe lightest and work my way down to dark, we'll do uh, yellow, pink, and then the orangey color. Right, not a perfect slice. I'm gonna just try to get the other side of it. And then pink's gonna be the straight slice in the middle. So unlike Sakuras that are actually gonna have a little bit softer of a body, this is pretty hard, so let's see if we can actually use it inside this paint stick while well, casing. Just get one quick test. So like I said, gonna start with the yellow on bottom and try to rotate up as I go through a letter. Doesn't look like the pink wants to work too well. Let's go for a little bit larger of a chunk. Those three sections should all be long enough to use. So we are seeing a little bit of crossover in colors, so it might be something to keep in mind. So right here we're seeing that the middle color is not quite represented as we're kind of getting flat top. So when you are writing with the whole top, you're then also going to get the other two colors in combination with it. So I think the slicing might actually be a better option here because you can start with one little contour, rotate, also go to that edge contour, and then keep going around. So let's give that a go. It's definitely not going to work with the harder paint sticks, so we might have to jump right into the Sakuras. So from an old streaker video, I got this half orange, half purple. Got the reverse of that. I also have a blue, yellow, white, and orange. So my guess is these three, the white, yellow, and orange, are going to be the best complementary colors. I can do a fade from white to yellow to then orange. And then uh, maybe we'll come up with something else for the darker colors. So this is what just the standard split streaker looks like. So you can start with the, the orange tag, and then you can rotate in and get half purple. My goal is to actually have a third color in here so it makes kind of a smoother transition. Something cool like that. We'll see how it works out. So for starters, we're gonna have to totally undo all of these. Oh wow, that's very interesting. So we've got somewhat of a wind in there. Looks like the bit is actually extruding into the top. I assume there's also a plastic at the bottom of this tube, but it just pulled right out of the black. I used obviously the white in that review. It's a pretty comparable stick size as well. So I can't actually recommend doing that. It cracked the yellow halfway in. So might as well just take the slow route and undo it all the way. 
Now that we got all three done, let's cut the back off the Sakura. Save that for later. So basically we want to cut this down into three little slices. We can use that center as a nice little break point, but have little triangles throughout here. Each are about the same size, and they cover you know maybe a third of the whole thing. And then we can get that kind of even split. Just trimming the two sides up so we got something flat to work with. Basically you want to start with one straight edge at least, so just do a quick slice. It looks like these uh, cranks are a little bit fragile because of that center tube. So it looks like a good kind of angle here. So I'm going to start on the long way. It seems like they cut a little bit easier when you do it the whole length and go pretty slow. You're seeing that crack form when you, you, know, you cut one area too fast before the other sides don't have enough time to actually cut as well. It might be easier to go from the inside. Seems to want to roll otherwise. That looks like a pretty good slice. These two are a little off. We'll make something work out of them. I suppose I should just cut the same size of all of these. It gives us a chance to try something extra out of the, the top half. Sakura is definitely split a lot easier. These are, like I mentioned in my review, they're a lot greasier, so they're softer just a little bit. They're going to flow a little bit wetter on the wall, but they're also going to cut a lot smoother. Straight cut to start. That looks like about a third there, so we'll mark that. Try to cut straight but towards the middle as well. So you can see here I've got two kind of angled cuts going both towards the middle. Hopefully we get a good cut here. And I'll just slowly saw this to get it going and then do the whole side once I get a little groove. That's the kind of cut you want. All right, so now we just got to fill in that last little bit with uh, the other crank. Looks like we got enough to salvage one. Let's see how much we need to get rid of. Looks like I need the white to be about the size of the orange pretty good. I'm gonna put it into the Sakura body just because that threads a lot faster. So I'm just gonna hold my finger down here, give it some pressure and let it kind of sneak in there. So now my finger is gonna be pushing down from the top and I'm gonna just slowly turn it back. You're gonna see some blowout there of the extra paint kind of sneaking out. We got white and yellow. Orange looks fine. Got some yellow lost on my finger. So looks like we got rid of the extra bit that fell off, and we're good to go for all three colors. So my plan here is going to start with white, rotate a little bit to the right and get some yellow, and then rotate again and get some orange on the page. It's kind of interesting to see a little bit of separation here. So back to the white. You can see that little bit of skipping is coming from the fact that this side's still a little bit small. We'll work with it though. So I almost feel like I'm having to rotate too much of the marker each time. It takes a little bit of dexterity to actually be able to rotate and write and then also make sure you're not rotating into the next color too much. So I think maybe smaller sections of color would actually do us better. Maybe if we had two pendle wheels, we'd be able to go all the way around and then continue back up with the reverse. It might be an interesting thing to try. We got that extra little set to do it with, so let's see how it works. I think it's pretty clear that the crinks are not going to be great for splitting. They're just a little bit too dry and fragile. I'm going to go back for the Sakura. It's not the best mix of colors here, but let's see if we can get a quad. I'm probably going to have to clean off the top of this as my fingers were covered in a bunch of stuff. Re-expose each of the colors. Even though the color mix isn't too great, it seems to be looking pretty cool. Kind of like the solid side that, that you get each of them. So in the end, the pinwheel looks pretty nice. Definitely got an extra big purple section right there. So I wanted to give this a try on vertical surfaces. I felt that like just even the little bit of gravity that's holding you back from twisting it on the page face down was not really working as great as I thought it would. I think it'll be easier to lightly spin the marker as you go through it. 
Wow, that rode so much better. And it also gets you a little bit more elbow room to actually move the marker around. So as we're getting to the end there, the little pieces don't have much to hold on to and it looks like we blew out a little bit. Good timing though, as I was just to the end of the board. So I definitely have a few takeaways after trying to do this multicolor split. You're definitely going to want to stick with something that has that kind of triangular look to it. Something, I think they call it pinwheeling, where you have multiple slices almost. That full up and down kind of square block definitely didn't work because this middle section, you weren't actually hitting that when you were running along the edges too much. And then when you did, it was also competing with the whole top face, so you're not really going to see a unique color in the middle. These paint to goes and the mark all bees, the more big scrawler stuff's not going to hold up too great. They're too dry. Basically, the oily side of the Sakura makes it super easy to split. Even crink was a little bit too dry to get a consistent split. I'd be really disappointed if I got a bunch of cranks, tried to split a bunch, and ended up with all the shards that I was practicing today. Unfortunately, that's what happens with this kind of research and development of splitting. This is my first time trying through it so there is some casualties but nonetheless I was really happy with the final performance out of the you know quadruple color split this is the last of it it got all mushed up down there in the basement as I said but the little triangle here works super well on those dark colors it didn't quite give that gradient that I was looking for so I might have to readdress that and try to try to work on my techniques of actually drawing with these to get that gradient effect but it still gave that kind of marbling and spiral effect that you know you know and love from a double split let alone this quadruple and I'm sure you could jam so you move more colors in there I fit I think I eight little slices in this one so you could have upwards of eight colors I know Sakura has that many colors in their line so maybe a full rainbow spectrum would be a cool thing to try out as far as the splitting goes, I know a lot of people use fishing line and try to use it that way. I think something even better would be a super thin kind of cable or a little wire. I think that would give you the best results if you really tightened it up and actually were able to kind of pass the slice through the whole marker body. That would give you the cleanest results as well as the least chance of actually breaking down the, the paint stick. That too, you might be able to set up some predefined angles, so you just have to push it through at a 45 degree angle and it makes that perfect cut for you. It wasn't great using the razor blade, so, so that's a good thing to come back to in the future. Maybe a little DIY jig that you can just pass a whole streaker through and get it all sliced up into perfect, perfect size. Although the little slices, I've got a few left over there, are definitely totally fine to work in themselves. We had no issues with actually stacking this up. So it might be a little bit harder to do longer slices, but all together I was really impressed and this was a good little proof of concept. And I hope it was helpful in showing you guys how to split a streaker in a kind of different way. Thank you again to Design Crowd who has sponsored this video. Design Crowd helps you to crowdsource a designer for your next digital design project. This allows you to have many different professionals work on designing you the best logo, banner, or t-shirt. Don't forget about the $100 VIP special offer for all Sive viewers. Entering the discount code SIVE or following the link to designcrowd.com forward slash SIVE will save you $100 on your next project. I've launched my project with sample artwork and the desired project outcome, and only after a day, I've seen several designers already start working on it. I've provided feedback and critique on some of the initial designs. I look forward to sharing the final outcome in a future video. If you're in need of custom-made designs, be sure to head over to designcrowd.com forward slash SIVE. And as always, leave your feedback in the comment section of the video if you've split streakers in a similar way or you have something that might work a little bit better. Or leave your name down there as well and maybe I'll hit it up in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to spray that like button. The support goes tremendously far. As well as consider joining the crew by subscribing. I post weekly videos, graffiti related mostly, and a recent one was actually the Crink K80 review. These worked really well, so be sure to check out all the surfaces I tried them on and all the little tests I went through for them. Even got to write underwater, so definitely check that out as well some of the other projects I've been working on recently. That's going to do it for me, guys. Peace.